also being yes, please leave me. <laughs> Let's check there. Uh, has been chairman of the board of the Sports Authority of Thailand and also the chairman of the board. Okay. Uh, and currently, he is the Secretary General for the Federation of Thai in Film. And we also will talk, you know, how movies really influence how people choose their, their destination when they go on vacation. Uh, I could be really here, I've been talking, you know, about your CV for a long time, but as we say that tourism is, you know, an industry of people, uh, I would like to highlight the points that I saw in your CV that really struck to me, and is that you stand. Uh, you have been recognized for your defense of gender equality, for promoting a campaign to stop violence against women and children, and you are also a child rights protection ambassador. So, you know, I think that says a lot about, about who you are. So, you know, I just wanted to highlight those facts. Now, Ms. Yolanda uh, Perdomo. Yolanda is an expert in sustainable destination management, product development, marketing, tourism, intelligence, and governance with over 20 years of professional experience in the tourism sector worldwide. Uh, prior to joining IFEMA Madrid, and we will talk a little bit more about this project uh, later on, uh, Yolanda serves as director of affiliate members for the United Nations World Tourism Organization, and she was also the CEO of the Tourism Board of the Canary Islands. So, well, Yolanda, I have to say also that not only she talks the talk, but she walks the walk, because she is coming here, and the four days that she is coming, she's just not flying all the way from Spain for this forum, but she's having meeting after meeting for her new project that we will talk a little bit about. Now, Ms. Ben Montgomery, she is the Vice President and, chair, and Chairperson of International Affairs of the Thai Hotel Association. She's also Director of Business Relation Management at Centana Hotels and Resorts and Chairperson of the Pacific Asia Travel Association, PATA, the Thailand chapter. Um, ben has a long experience in the hospitality industry, having worked also in previous luxury hotels as the Sangrila Hotel and the Mandarin Oriental and serving in different tourism expert panels also as advisor. Now, the most important thing about uh, Ben Montgomery is that her elder daughter, she is a champion. She belongs to the Thai national sales team, and she's currently training in the Canary Island in Spain. So, you know, that's another point of reference. So, And finally, Mr. Ernesto Guerra, I really have to thank you, because uh, Ernesto hasn't been feeling really well, and he's really making an effort to be with us today. So thank you. He is the general manager of Melia Samui, and he's also from the Gran Canaria. If, well, in fact, there are three people that have links to the Canary Island in this panel out of the five that we are here, because uh, Yolanda and Ernesto both are, in fact, from Lanzarote. No? Oh, oh, okay. So that's good. But the Canary Island. So, you know, a group of islands with two million people out of the 46 in Spain, and we have here, you know, three links to the, to the Canary Island. So, so this is great. So, well, um, Ernesto, he's a hospitality executive with a career of more than 17 years in managing various aspects of hotels, including uh, large scale and luxury properties. Six years as a board member of the Hotel Association also in Spain, in Lanzarote. And in Thailand, he has recently been appointment, appointed sorry, as a member of the Board of Directors of the Spanish Thai Chamber of Commerce, another public-private that, you know, we will talk about a uh, collaboration and so on. So uh, we are going to start now with the, um, with the panel. Uh, I will encourage you, you know, to uh, not to follow a strict order when I ask questions, but interrupt each other in an organized manner, and you know, uh, talk whenever you consider that is uh, your time to do it. As I was uh, saying before, uh, tourism represent more than 11 percent of the GPD in um, GDP in uh, Thailand and also in Spain previous to uh, to COVID and also a high percentage of uh, employment in both, can, in both countries. Thailand received 40 million tourists in 2019, Spain 83 million uh, international visitors. And if we look at the headlines in the news this uh, week, we will see that Thailand has already received 10 million visitors by the end of, of May, expecting 30 million by the end uh, of the year, and expect to fully recover the 40 million tourists uh, by the end of next year, 2024. 
uh, more important than those numbers are that the tourists received generated 428 billion baht until May. Now, Spain, from January to April of this year, has received already 21 million tourists and expect to receive this summer more tourists than in 2019. And during this four months period, the total expenditure was 14% higher than in 2019. Now, behind these headlines, uh, both countries are working towards the same goal, right? Uh, let's leave aside you know, those big numbers and those rankings. And what we want is higher quality tourism, tourists that stay longer, tourists that spend more, that disperse the benefits to another cities, smaller cities, that support the local communities, as well as in the case of Spain, travel in low season and away from the more uh, touristic cities in, in, in Spain. Now, so let me start, because I think we, have, we can go here from bigger picture to a smaller picture, uh, with Dr. Wirasak. So Dr. Wirasak, are these numbers that we have seen in the news, in the headlines, um, good news or bad news? What is your take in this growth? And is this growth well managed? Uh, we all know that there has been a lot of work put by both, you know, uh, tourism in uh, Thailand and tourism in Spain for the last 20 years. I mean, this is not something, something new. But uh, is it working? Are we doing it right? I mean, are we getting better quality tourism? Or this more spending that we see lately is just a consequence of inflation and the rise of price? Yes, I will. Don't worry. So, thank you so much. Okay, so what did Well, I think uh, look at the in terms of number between then and now. Then means before COVID and after COVID. The the figures before COVID tells the world like that. Just I show you on the screen. That is going to reach as far as 1.8 billion uh, arrivals soon enough because we are approaching that stage of time. The whether, whether we did it right or not before COVID, we're going to have to make it right from now on. Otherwise, it's going to be such a bad situation to be in in the world of travel and tourism that reach that high of people traveling from one place to another. And I think that it is a lot of force that when people move from one place to another, that they are not only learning, experiencing, but they're also telling others what should be done. And they can become both as students, they can become teachers, and they become learners in terms of what they have seen in their past experience. And I will want to quote that more and more that medias and, and the social medias has been educating all of us tremendously of what's going on in the world in terms of both politics and what the reality of environment degradation. The, the talks that went on in Davos last year that put the 10 risks, the most highest risk, people was worrying of what's going to happen in the next two years and in the next decades came to the same answer that more than half of the items on the list are basically what happened with the environment. And that means all, most of the travelers by now should already be aware of that. Not all of them, but they will be acting crucially as someone who put their thinking into action when they go do something. Because lots of time, you see, when people uh, traveling from their own home to go elsewhere, it's also time that they, they automatically tell themselves that they will adapt. They'll, they'll try to prepare, they'll try to adapt. Somehow they will do some part of their homework before they go to places so that they can get the most out of their experience in that short period of time. And that, I think, is a good schooling. Therefore, with whatever figures that is going to come and look at what happened after COVID this year, 
we see a very bright future of the new return and uh, uh, of the figures that we used to have before COVID. So there will be more people trying to travel, maybe in, not in the same manners, just like before. Uh, lots of people start to, to try to uh, travel by train more. Many of them want to go to visit place that not too many people have been there before. They want to ha have different experience. Uh, therefore, I think with the figures we have, like Thailand used to have 39 million, and we, that was the time when I was still in office, uh, I went to, to shook the hand of that person myself to make sure that it make he headlines that we are now receiving about half, a little more than half of what the local population has. This is the first time in our history. But uh, for, for Spain, we would like to learn also from your past experience that you have been receiving uh, twice as much of your own populations for some time already. And that's something is challenging for us. Uh, I would like to touch on the second issue then, if I may, is that when I look at the transportation medium in Spain and also in European countries, you've been relying on a, a lot of train systems. Uh, and we are now just start to approach to that direction. But we're still far behind in terms of not laying down the rail and the steel or put the, the train to uh, the car on the rail, but it is how to manage the culture of using train. Uh, look at how many new lines, new colorful lines running in Bangkok right now. Uh, we are no second to none, but still people still want to go by, by car because it's more convenient for them. Uh, we are going to have dual track train to go seven different directions from Bangkok, from north to south to northeast, also connected to the Laotian Railroad. Uh, it will connect us all the way to China. But how many of us will be having the right culture to use the train to replace the car? And uh, what will the manager at each station should be preparing? Uh, to accommodate those who are coming to train station? Or what are the services that we should have on the train? I, I did use uh, a lot of Wi-Fi when I was in Spain uh, last time I visited, and uh, it was very convenient. Also, when you come down from the train, it is just like when you step out of the BTS train because you step out without, without having to step down or step up. Those are obstacles because Second thing I want to, uh, to also address is the issue about tourism for all. Because regardless of how many big numbers we are receiving of arrivals, we want to see the value of members of families who come in. It doesn't always mean what it represents 30 some years ago where only male at the age of 30s who is professionals who get to travel internationally. But now, people with older age, people with young kids, ladies uh, practicing, uh, pregnancy with her pregnancy, or people on wheelchairs and people with disabilities are traveling. And not only them, but every time they will be traveling, they'll have their companies or uh, parents or sometimes uh, members of their families to travel along with. And the smile on those people's face put a much bigger smile to those who have to come along. Therefore, this is the value that we want to see. And I think I have seen that in Spain and elsewhere in, in European countries. And that's something rather new to us, although we are trying hard. Uh, if you can show me the next slide. Uh, uh, see, train traveling in, in Europe has been very common. Uh, but for us, it's not very common at all. Uh, we just keep the train running just for the sake of political uh, uh, enthusiasm, as, as I say. Uh, but it's going to replace those culture into make it traveling by train become a more common thing for the Thais. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, see, when 
people who travel with dogs, guiding dogs in Europe, came out the, of the car. Well, this Euro star still have to step down from the, from the car. But the platform designed to have something arranged so that she can come down with her dog on her laps uh, easily and accessibly by her own self. No one has to carry her down or carry her up. Uh, so that is something I would think that the experience that Spain and the rest of the Europeans has in the past two, three decades can, can give us some good example that we can follow. I, I would like to stop my presentation here so that others can also join in. Thank you. Okay. Well. Yeah. Yes, thank you. We will touch those points and also accessibility and uh, in, uh, inclusion and uh, inclusive tourism for all in Spain. We will touch when uh, we talk with Yolanda about you know accessibility in Madrid in the small cities, big cities. But I would like to turn first, as I say, going from big to to a small uh, to Ben, and ask you you know what are right now the biggest challenge that the hotels face in in Thailand after you know trying to recover from from COVID. Uh, the new technologies also, how do you use them to relate better to the, to the clients? And also touching what um, Dr. Wirsak was saying, you know, about inclusivity and tourism for all, about accessibility. So you can touch quickly those three points. Good morning, everybody. Very pleased to be here. And uh, more than ever that we need is the law, the changing of the law. And I firsthand listened to the, uh, Dr. Virasak at the Foreign uh, Correspondent Club, uh, the professor of law from Harvard University, shy the light what Thailand can improve in all aspects. Hotels and tourism is part of it. And we cannot do it alone. Tourism relied on everyone to make our home livable, presentable, and then we can ready to welcome our guests. We have lots of tools currently. We have technologies. We have a new generation a incoming government with a well-struck policy, you know, back up with 25 million uh, people. And you are, uh, Dr. Dr. Riasak, you have the hope. You're one of two, 250 senators that can support this changing. And we are, we are looking forward to see the change. Uh, why I'm saying that? Because for us, yes, the, the previous session was the old world. We are here, we're talking new world. After um, low-cost airlines, after um, social media, our generation, younger generation, become one. They're not seeing a uh, stranger. They only see that they're friends that never meet before. That's the principle. Have you ever seen any younger kids, younger generation, form alliance to fight with Russia, to fight with China? No, they get together, they plan a trip. So it's a culture of sharing. They're sharing music, they're sharing theme, they're sharing cooking classes. And this is everywhere. And they look forward to meet each other. And we, tourism sector, are just here to facilitate the needs. So if you would like to see the world in peace, give them tools, peace, you know. So, for example, uh, Sophia, my, my elder daughter, happened to be uh, your alumni. I look at it, President uh, Xi Jinping, our incoming Pita Lim Jalen Lat, Dr. Virasak, and my Sophia study Harvard University. You think they're going to plan to kill each other? But they call each other sister and brother, I believe. Right? So, we make sure that, that the new world is not fighting. It's not fighting. I took Sophia, I know, I'm not talking, she took me to Portugal. And in her camp, because she trained in Grand Canaria, 
And so her teammates, one from France, one from Czech Republic, one from uh, Switzerland. And Sophia was born here, grew up uh, and study now in the States, but grew up in Thailand, her father's American. So I'm a busy mom, I cook for them. After seven days, they become, they call me mommy. And I asked them, what do you think about the war? They said, very nonsense. We are friends, why killing? And they arranged already the next trip to travel together. So this is the power of tourism. That's all for me for now. Yes, I think you are completely right. <laughs> you know, and I think tourism is probably one of the best tools to people to get to know each other, get to know the cultures, a better understanding, and you know, to make a, a good friends out of other people. And, uh, you know, maybe little by little change, change the world. And as you say, I mean, all of us that have kids that have been raised in different countries and uh, have friends from different cultures, they move and they think in a different way. So you hopefully this will be the way, the way for the future. So I would like to turn now to, to Ernesto and to Melia because you are one of the flagships of uh, Spanish industry. And I, I would like to learn a little bit more about how is your, what is your experience about bringing, you know, Spanish brand to, to Thailand and how do you keep the Spanish uh, principles and values but respect and so you know um, the values of the Thai culture and how do you also work to improve you know the local communities uh, quality of life with your work in here. Thank you. Sabadikap, Kopunti Chuan Chan. I think I said it right. I'm starting to learn some words. Uh, thank you for inviting me today. Um, well, to, I'm going to be quite brief because it could take so long uh, to explain why Melia is a, it's a number one uh, hotel company in Spain, third in Europe and 19th in the world. But basically, it um, started as a family-owned family company. still keeps like that, even uh, we are on the stock market. And, um, you know, the, the family decisions also are um, taken uh, to strategically to, to move around, no? We had our first hotel in 1985 internationally out of Spain. And uh, now we have uh, 390 hotels plus less uh, um, and on uh, the pipeline another 50. Uh, APAC is the region uh, that is growing with uh, EMEA um, quite, uh, quite a lot on the next uh, years. And, uh, and uh, why not before? Well, actually, we went uh, from, from being an, an, you know, an, an asset-heavy asset company to, to turning into a management company. So um, basically here in, in Thailand, we are making partnerships with uh, companies that share the same values as, as we have in Melia, and uh, we we are you know quite happy to to, to share these values with with TCC with AWC company, uh, quite big here also in in Thailand, and um, yes, uh, two years and a half ago we didn't have any any hotel here in Thailand. Um, I'm proud to say that we are gonna open our fourth hotel in July. Uh, in Bangkok uh, with our inside company, um, inside uh, by Melia. It's going to be in the Onut area. Uh, also expecting to open another one in Phuket, Caron on 2024. And some new projects also in, in Bangkok for the future, let's say maybe 2025, 2026. So great expansion here. And um, as I said, I, I believe because we share uh, our main core values uh, of the business. Uh, at the end, um, our our president, still former president, that uh, in, uh, initiated the company in 1956, he says always uh, leisure at heart and business in mind. No, so this is the best principle we we use always to to develop uh, hotels in in different countries with with different partners. Thailand is, um, you know, when, when we when we go around the world with with Melia, we we speak about the Spanish warmth uh, because there, it's something we are proud of. Uh, but when you come to Thailand, I mean, you find this very naturally. So, 
um, you know, as the minister said, you know, these smiles of people, you know, welcome everyone. So uh, I was, I, I was, I didn't come to Thailand before um, I arrived eight months ago. So when I came here, and um, also being from from an island, I'm from from Gran Canaria. Um, I could find a lot of similarities between uh, between Thais and, and Spanish. Um, also, um, on the tourism side, I can find some similar similarities and some um, areas to improve. You know, um, similarities. Well, as I said, the warmth from both countries it's uh, it's incredible when when you know people come from from Europe and uh, normally they come from this northern part. Uh, uh, so so cold, and they come to this place. They you know warm place, nice temperature, and they are welcomed with these nice smiles. It makes a total difference. But you know the best thing is that it's natural. It's not something forced. People don't 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 try hard to do it. It comes by, by themselves. So this is this makes a, a huge impression to them. Um, and. Uh, uh, let, let, me, let me ask you, because you know, so in the, the slide that you have there, and yes. also in your website, Melia, say, Melia is the most sustainable hotel chain in the world. Now, that's a bold statement. So, uh, can you tell us a little bit more about how you work and go yes. about sustainability? Well, since uh, this, is, this is one of the commitments of our CEO, uh, Gabriel Escarrer, uh, son of, of Mr. Escarrer, he, is, he got elected uh, CEO from 2016, and since 2019, he's, uh, we are the, the most sustainable company uh, in the world by S&P Global. Uh, just one year we went to second place, but we again uh, went to first. So how do we do it? Um, our pr principle is travel for good. So, um, you know, we try to do it good for, for, for the planet, good for our people, good for our community, and uh, governance for good. Uh, basically, um, you know, you, you can find the different points that we, we can talk a lot now about how do we do it, sustainable construction. So last year, uh, we opened in, in Menorca um, our first hotel net zero. Um, this was a big challenge. Uh, we, we in the hotel um, make 87% net zero and the other 13% we work with the local community uh, involved in, in, in different uh, activities with them to lower our carbonized uh, um, footprint. No? Uh, so, yes, um, it's been hard to, to maintain there, but you know, our CEO every year comes with a new challenge. Um, and, and we, we all, all, in all our hotels, you will see later, uh, we, we work on, on these different uh, four pillars. Um, Basically, everyone is involved in the energy efficiency. And nowadays, uh, energy is so expensive and getting even worse. Water management is going to be an issue. Maybe not in Thailand, because you have a lot of, of, of water here. But uh, believe me, in some countries, even in Europe, uh, water management is going to be something quite important. Um, in the Canary Islands, where I come from, we don't have any, we have seven days rain per year. so. You can imagine no rivers. Yeah. Uh, we had to we have to take the water from the sea. So also for us, it's it's um, it's a, it's a something that we we work hardly uh, not in our hotels uh, only in Spain but also in Thailand. In in the case of, of my hotel, we we have a water filter uh, just to to reuse the the water also for irrigation afterwards. So. Even that we have a lot of water in Thailand, we still keep in mind, and our CEO is what, what pretends with, with all our hotels, is to keep on working on each of these four pillars that, that we have in the company. Okay. Ben, do you want to add something in here? Because I also Centara Hotels is the first Asian hospitality chain with the GCTC. So you can go ahead. Yeah, we, we have 40 hotels uh, in 11 countries, and we endorse this practice, and then we try to, um, you know, um, share as well. So um, 
as part of Thai Hotel Association, we also send our, um, our, uh, our team to, be, to train the trainer. So yeah, the more we share how we do, the better we, we, we do together. Yes. Okay. Could we now go ahead and show the video uh, for uh, Madrid IFEMA? Because uh, Yolanda Patomo is the director of Madrid uh, IFEMA, and this is a new Madrid Turismo by IFEMA Madrid was created to improve Madrid's positioning in the long-haul inbound markets. As well as improving awareness and visibility, tourism expenditure, length of stay, and the number of high net worth tourists from the Americas, Asia, and the Middle East. This public-private venture is managed by the experts in tourism panel for the region of Madrid. The private sector is represented by Madrid's main tourism associations, which have appointed the companies that will represent them in the panel. The target markets are the United States and Canada, Latin America, Asia and the Middle East. The aim is to position Madrid as a world-class destination, the best cultural destination in the world. Madrid's value proposition will focus on its unique lifestyle, which makes it different from its competitors. Such an ambitious project can only be possible through collaboration and a firm commitment to ensure that tourism creates more opportunities for everyone. Okay, so Yolanda, tell us what is new or what is different about this, this new initiative? I think one of the questions you were posing was that of which, I mean, the kind of good practices we can share among each other. And I think there are three elements in this project that I think we can, we can share with you because I have, I have, you know, I have worked in many, in many different positions and we, we have always discussed a number of questions and most of the times those were just on the theoret theoretical level. They were never implemented in practice. And here, this is happening. The first question is um, related to governance. A project like this requires a public-private collaboration model, and that's not easy to implement. Here we have two different institutions. We have the, the city council for the city of Madrid, and then we have the government of the region. And in the past, they have done the tourism promotion in a separate manner. If we want to be more efficient and more effective, that has to be done jointly. So this uh, project was designed to do so. We are now working in a collaborative manner in which we have a public-public uh, collaboration and we're also collaborating with the private sector. As you saw here, we have the most relevant associations that have a, a, a tourism component and they appoint the companies that uh, attend these meetings. It's completely transparent and it has the legitimacy provided by this, by this uh, uh, method. We meet regularly, uh, we discuss the priorities, uh, we have discussed uh, where to focus our uh, objectives, which target mar mar markets we should uh, um, uh, you know, define and also the kind of, the typology of activities that we should uh, highlight depending on every part of the world. This, uh, as a result, we have now an approach uh, that I think will allow us to position Madrid as a must-see destination in Europe. In the past, uh, Madrid has been perceived sometimes as a hub to go to other destinations and also to South America or as a gate to visit other destinations in Spain, or as a business destination. Only recently has been perceived as a leisure destination. Uh, and it has happened for the Spaniards that come for, to Madrid for leisure, and also for Europeans. Many Europeans discovered Madrid uh, during the pandemic. And now we have French, people from Belgium, uh, from Holland visiting Madrid for these attributes we were showcasing here. Now we want to do the same in the long haul markets. And now I come to the second point when we talk to good practices. Uh, 
Here we want to highlight attributes that are very Spanish and that maybe you only find in Madrid. They are related to gastronomy, a certain lifestyle, art and culture, and also a different way to do shopping that doesn't happen in many other parts of, of, of the world. And when we highlight those attributes, we're achieving something that has to do with the SDGs and with the social dimension of sustainability. Why is it so? Because you are providing a lot more opportunities for many more people along the value chain. When you talk about gastronomy, you're talking about markets, farmers, fishers, everybody, not only the restaurants and the big hotels. So you provide opportunities for all those people. Uh, when you talk about shopping from a different perspective, you are providing opportunities for artisans, and therefore you are also uh, preserving tangible and intangible heritage. So this is very, very relevant, and this is what we are showcasing when we are looking for this particularly positioning for Madrid in the long haul markets. And the third element has to do with competitiveness. If you only depend on a few inbound markets, as it happened a lot of times in Spain in the past, and we know because we were born in the Canary Islands and we had a high dependence on only a few markets, then you learn that you have to diversify that approach. And now by targeting uh, at the Americas, by also looking at new opportunities here in Asia, where we believe there's a lot of room for improvement, uh, and also in the Middle East, we are di diversifying and making sure that our tourism model is much more competitive. So I think those are three learnings that I think can be shared and where we can, I think, have a lot uh, of room again for improvement. Okay, yeah, I mean, I mean, it's right. 80% uh, of the tourism in Spain comes uh, from Europe. So, you know, we are also trying to uh, diversify there, there a bit. Now, in Southeast Asia, uh, Thailand, do you see the rest of Southeast Asia? I mean, for example, when we send people from Long Haul to Spain, I mean, we talk to go to Europe, you know, and we do several stops. It's not just coming to Spain, sometimes it's going to Italy, France, and Spain, so, you know, it's a lot. So do you sell Southeast Asia? Do you work together with other countries in Southeast Asia to sell in the Long Haul the same way? Or do you see the rest of Southeast Asia as competitors? We can, we can look at it both ways. Uh, yes, for lots of people outside of ASEAN probably do not realize that one of the largest group coming to Thailand these days are people from ASEAN. The Chinese only consists of 30% of uh, the outsider who come in, and the, the another 30% is from ASEAN itself. So yes, we, we are sending clients to, to one another, uh, and yes, we try to sell ourselves to the long haul, this, uh, the long haul flyer, flyer to come to us as uh, one single uh, flight, but several, couple of travel destinations, like uh, Thailand and our neighboring countries, like Laos, Cambodia, has agreed, and it was me who talked to the cabinet uh, when I was still in the office that Lots of people come to Thailand with single visas, but when they go to the uh, border town, they want to cross the border, but they can't come back because that means they, they need to apply for a new visa. That's why I talk to the cabinet and say, let's extend that visa to be a re-entry able visa for those people who want to spend a, a night or two at our neighboring country cities and then come back. So it means I have to go travel to talk to my colleagues, uh, ministers of tourism in these countries to, sell, to tell that we have sent, changed our uh, uh, system. Therefore, be prepared to receive uh, new clients coming into your border. Uh, they're going to spend a couple of nights and then they might come back because we, we still fly, uh, fly more frequent than any other cities in this area. But again, Yes, uh, in, I agree with you, uh, Yolanda, that there's a lot of room that we can improve together. One thing I must make sure that I speak in this, uh, uh, in this session is that we still do, do not have the direct flight reconnected. And uh, I looked at, and uh, Thai International used to have a direct flight, 
uh, from Bangkok to Madrid and vice versa. Uh, some flights from, from you to come to us. Uh, let's try to do that together. Uh, it's just only 12 hours away. And uh, if that happened, the relationship of the people between Spain and Thailand will reconnect very easily. And uh, we, we can bring a lot more in between. Uh, and, and that's one thing that I want to say. Uh, the other thing that uh, I want to talk about is that look at the, how resilient of the world uh, tourism industries coming back. There will be more and more people and more different people instead of the revisiting, but there's going to be new visitors coming into both Spain and Thailand soon enough. Uh, there will be different of culture, not only language, but also different way of uh, seeing things. There will be some misunderstanding. There will be some unsafety for them to, to do or commit or fall into when they go into different places that they haven't done enough homework. So tourism safety is something that we can perhaps share among each other of what do we learn from the new face who come in. For those who have been here many, many times, uh, we have been, Thailand has been rated at 64% uh, return uh, visit. Therefore, most of our guests in the past, uh, prior to COVID time, they are mostly know their place already. But from now on, we will be having people from elsewhere. Let's look at those who are coming from uh, South Asia, for instance. Uh, India has just signed uh, one of the largest uh, aircraft uh, 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 agreement in the world. Some of, of four, four, five hundred new aircraft uh, are, are signed. So soon enough, those aircraft is going to fly and, and bring people from South Asia to everywhere, including Spain and Thailand. And uh, we still haven't done enough homework to understand the new face who are coming in. Uh, so safety standard and safety measure and understanding not only just the standard but also understand, understanding the difference of those new clients who are coming in of what else do we need to talk to them about. Uh, I, can, I can tell you that we, we have had some not very really pleasant uh, experience before when talking about safety standard but we are now uh, working hard on it, and I think sharing of what do we need to to look up for would be very beneficial in the long run. It's going to be uh, both good for ESG, for environment, for social uh, responsibility, and also for the good governance. And that's, again, tourism can bring us to be more cooperative, to help each other, to promote peace, to promote uh, environment, and also to, uh, to save uh, the prosperity, uh, which is getting much more difficult than ever when the uh, global economy is going in, in, in depression again like this. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so let's put together three things that you have said, uh, connectivity, uh, sustainability, safety, and what the new tourists want. And let's play Imagine. So let's imagine we have a direct flight to Madrid, let's say 2024, 2025, uh, maybe by, you know, a Thai company. And Yolanda, when they land in Madrid, what do you offer them in terms of safety, uh, accessibility? and what the tourist is looking for, because we know tourists are not just, you know, not going for a destination, just uh, uh, to be, but to do things, uh, activities, attractions, to do something different, uh, experience. So what do you offer them there, tying with all the three elements that Dr. Wirasak just mentioned? Uh, I hope it's, it will be 2024, more than 2025. I think this is strategic. I think we have to improve our connectivity. Uh, with uh, Southeast Asia, and uh, I think we have to ask ourselves what if if they if they think of a trip to Europe, they normally think of cities like Paris, Rome, London, and so on. Why should they include Madrid as a massive destination? 
there is a unique feature about Madrid. You have the urban part of Madrid, the city, and then you have the region around, and only like 20 minutes uh, away from the city center, you can visit wineries, uh, you, can, you have castles uh, from the Middle Ages, you have picturesque cities that are perfect for Instagram, you can play golf, uh, you can do trekking. That's quite unusual, because in, in other big European cities, you find the periphery, this urban area, for a long time. So you are not able to have this unique mixture of the city vibes and all you can do around in such a way. And it has all the Spanish elements because Madrid is an open city that welcomes everybody in Spain. So you have a wonderful gastronomy scene, a national and international, and a, an approach to leisure that is also different to other cities in Europe. So uh, it is also a safe city. We, we can really uh, say that uh, honestly, and it's perfectly, uh, um, it has a perfect connectivity with other uh, cities in Spain, also by train, by the way, that we use now a lot. We have a high-speed train. So it is a very uh, convenient uh, way to visit Spain, and it's, a, and it's a place to visit for several days because of the wide and unique offering it has. So let's touch now the point of the public-private uh, collaboration. Um, Ernesto, you are just a member of the Chamber of Commerce, so Chamber of Commerce, public-private. So how do you think Melia can add value to the Chamber of Commerce and how the Chamber of Commerce adds value and supports your company? Well, that, that's a good question. And, um, you know, I, I can... I've been here now eight months, and I can see the support that um, Ambassador and, and Luis Lopez from uh, Spanish uh, Commerce Office are, are giving to, to our chamber. Um, you know, and this helps also uh, to bring some of our part of our culture and gastronomy to Thailand. I can see um, in Bangkok, um, Spanish restaurants are booming. Um, I can see that we have more and more uh, openings of, of new restaurants, uh, Spanish restaurants in Bangkok. So it seems like Thai people also like um, our gastronomy, um, our, our wines, our drinks, so, and, and even our, our music and, and culture. No? So, uh, on, on the side of Melia, as, as, as a Spanish company, um, also owned by you know, Spanish owners and, and still the family owning the majority of the stocks uh, of the company, we are proud always to, to uh, go around the world sharing our, our culture and our gastronomy. Um, this is how we, we, we are trying to, to bring uh, a part of Spain to, to Thailand, um, but not losing the, the culture, the design that our hotels have in Thailand. For instance, my hotel uh, in Samui, or the magnificent hotel we have in, in Chiang Mai, both of them are Thai designed. Beautiful, amazingly. Uh, the one in Chiang Mai, northern style, uh, Thai style, uh, but in both hotels, we have, um, we have Thai restaurant and Spanish restaurant. So um, I'm also um, want to share with you that we have been recently certified uh, by Office of Commerce as a Spanish restaurant in Samui. So this, uh, it's, it's what we are trying, um, very humble, but we are, what we are trying from Melia to, to bring on to, to our hotels and, and help to bring uh, Spain to, to Thailand. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, hotels are destinations in itself sometimes, right? Uh, so, Ben, how do you work so the hotel, I mean, with the government and with the stakeholders uh, to satisfy the expectations of the clients? Uh, because sometimes, you know, when the client goes to a hotel, I mean, it's just a place to sleep at the end of the day. How do you convert them in real destinations and, you know, uh, uh, give the client what they are looking for. 
um, I think we need to understand um, that nowadays uh, it's very changed uh, from, um, I mean, tourism in Thailand had changed, uh, and ASEAN as well, and Asian as well. In the past, we are inbound. We are receiving people from Europe and America. But nowadays, the planes go both ways. And you can see the great success of Japan when they lift up visa for Thai people. Thai people save Japan. You can go and, uh, you know, I can challenge you. You walk into the shop, the shopkeeper speak Thai to you. Swadika, you know. We're a great traveler. And so if you cannot give us a free visa, but maybe extend it, like a year visa, and make sure that we have direct flight, so the Thai go there, and then use Spain as a hub. Because ASEAN, Asian, we not go and stay two weeks in one place. We hopping, right? So like Japan, they keep going back, but they go to different, uh, different city. So my, one of my uh, cousin, go every city of Japan, you know, because the love is so much. So uh, Spain can be the same thing. You have them fly in, you give them a, you know, a, a year visa, but make sure maybe a few days they stay there, but then they go elsewhere and come back to you and fly out. So you have in and out. And that's what, you know, uh, Dr. Rizak tried with Thailand as well, that we want to be a hub. I remember we worked together when you were the minister, that if we could change our law, improve our law for, for Bangkok to be in the hub of ASEAN, and then we have visitors moving around ASEAN. But, but for us, it's much harder than, than European country. You are ahead of us. So my recommendation will be, um, and another thing is, there is no such honeymooner. The two of them travel together. No. A huge family or a group of friends. Even a couple. Just two days ago, uh, superstar Nadet and Yaya, they are the you know, a biggest stars in Thailand in the past 15 years. He's proposed to her in Italy. You know how many people went there? 30. To witness that proposal. So... We travel um, as a family. We take our kids and parents together. China do the same thing. Vietnamese, Malaysian, Singaporean. So make sure you have pool villa, family room, uh, you know, a bunk bed and a kids pool. Those are things that Asian people love. And yeah, connecting flights and extended visa. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. Yeah, I just love who, yeah, how you have right direct the question, you know, and include here the visa thing. So we take it as a message, you know, for the Schengen visa to be Spain to be your advocate, you know, for, for every visa. Um, Dr. Wirasak, I mean, you were Minister of Tourism. So as a Minister of Tourism, I, I'm sure, you know, you push initiatives to improve tourism, but you also, you know, uh, left Sang aside because it wasn't the time or wasn't the right moment. So what, what do you like to see here uh, with your experience, you know, your past experience moving forward for the Thai tourism? Save the planet. Yes. <laughs> and now the, that when I ever show up in any, any place, I usually wear the local costume because it support our, uh, our local people and our local people grow their own uh, cotton. And that's one thing. Uh, I also travel with my own water can. And this one, I got it from Koh uh, where most of the uh, divers come. 30% of the first dive, of the first uh, deep dive into the ocean uh, happened in Koh And this one, they sell this part with engraved of the place where you can refill f f water for free, anytime, anywhere, unlimited in Koh Tao. And that's the kind of thing that I've been uh, promoting. Or uh, now we, more than ever, we have more people uh, going to, this, to, uh, to the beach. And well, not only for ladies who are applying their suntan lotions or sunblock, but these are locally made. And it's a sunblock lotion done by the Thai, which is friendly 
to uh, the oceans and also to, to the coral. Uh, we have been doing a lot of initiative to try to perhaps make the ties people, the locals, to understand that, well, it, it's not the luxury that we want to pro project ourselves. It is, the, it is the consideration about how to save the earth, how to be friendly with the environment. We also, well, many of the Thai here uh, do know about the culture of Pinto. You carry uh, that towers of bowls to go to the temple to offer food for, to the monk. And now we have been doing this uh, in a quite a normal manner when uh, our clients uh, are traveling to island so that we don't have to use plastic bag, which have to throw away at the end of the time, and none of them uh, are any good uh, for recycling. Uh, another thing that I also do bring to places is this, pretty difficult to open. Oops, sorry. Yep, got it. So we get utensil. Uh, Instead of having to throw away every time you, you do the uh, food to go order, uh, and that's something that I do carry with me a lot, uh, and I find it very useful because when someone, uh, like as a former minister or, or a senator uh, in, the, in, the, in the office, who bring this thing to places, uh, people look at it and say, well, if he, if he can do it, I can do it too. See, when people travel, they, they tend to learn. They tend to try to see what other people were doing. And they, they in, well, instead of telling people to stay home and try to change themselves, uh, sometimes it is the atmosphere of the ambient that people want to change themselves when they go traveling. And they, then they, they see someone doing something different from what they have been doing. And they said, if that person can do it, I can do it too. Uh, see. Those are the things that I think when we talk about 39 million people coming to Thailand is a big force of an army of people who are willing to change. And if they change, they are also sending out signal to our locals. 67 million of us will also see them uh, either in the uh, main areas or in the secondary areas. And they said, if they come from th that far away and they bring their own chopsticks, and they clean it up themselves without throwing them away at the, at, at the end of the day, I can do it too. And that kind of thing that I think tourism is no longer just a business to feed food on the table, but it is the education for mankind. It is the time when mother can have a, a nice example to show to their kids that, hey, let's do that. And uh, it might be inconvenient at first, but let's do it because it looks fun. And that kind of thing is the experience I think the new vocabulary of tourism should cover. Thank you. Well, I'm really glad to see that you are one of those, only I think it's 12% of the tourism people that when they travel, uh, I mean of the tourists, yeah. that behave responsible. Uh, the Spain Tourism Board to España just conducted a, a survey with MasterCard and 53% of the tourists consider themselves very um, sustainable, responsible, but when they travel, only 12% were responsible tourists. Uh, because normally, I mean, when we uh, talk about sustainability, I mean, in the three aspects, social, economic, and uh, environmental, we are all very responsible, but then when it comes to uh, choose what trip you're gonna do, at the end of the day, what matters for more people is the price. So we put the sustainability in the hands of the companies. And we are uh, sustainable, yes, because the company we buy from is sustainable. And we assume that as our responsibility. But I think, as you say, you know, you educate the tourists and tell him, you know, instead of buying uh, water in plastic, which also you are gonna spend money, you just refill your bottle, you are doing good. So, you know, it's worth more a million small gestures that just one grand theme. So coming to the burden of responsibility of a responsible tourism, not sustainable, because we, we talk sustainable, we normally think about environment. So responsible tourism and the burden in the companies, I mean, the hotels have a big part to say about that. So uh, Ernesto, 
can you give us a little bit more about how you, because you, I mean, sustainability has to be visible, right? Because if not, people don't know what it is. Some people says, uh, in this same survey that, you know, they don't know what to find sustainable. So we have to let people see what we are doing. So what Melia does. Let, first of all, let me, let me uh, share with uh, Dr. Brasak. Um, in Europe, we have a, a policy of non-reusable plastic. Uh, so this is forbidden for all the countries. Um, I believe it entered this year or is going to enter ending this year. So, you know, this is a huge step that uh, was planned a few years ago uh, that all the companies had to prepare for, um, even hotels or small businesses. And also, all, you know, when, when, I, th when I think about Spain and, and, and being sustainable, uh, but I go to Germany and I see the Germans, I think, wow, I mean, they are on another level. Eh? So we recycle, we recycle glass, but they recycle per covers. I mean, it's amazing, you know? So what I'm trying to say is that somehow I could see that mostly uh, part of the tourism coming, uh, arrivals are from Europe, part of them, and we have this in our minds. So if you start implementing policies uh, around, the, around the tourism sector, we will easily follow and it will be easy also to uh, oblige the tourist uh, helping also uh, to us, no? So I encourage Thailand to, to do it because, you know, I think it's, it's going to help quite a lot. I see a lot, of, as you said, a lot of plastic thrown away, bottles and so on. About Melia, as, as, as I was saying, Monica, our, our CEO since um, he was named uh, 2016, since then, He's uh, really committed uh, in the sustainable um, change of our company. Uh, since then, he started um, the first one of the first steps, taking out all the plastic. Uh, 2018, I remember more or less the years because you know I was new on that time, so I was quite impressed that even that the cost of of our uh, our our uh, water and and everything we put in the hotel were going up sometimes ten or twenty percent. Uh, company was totally committed to make the change. It doesn't matter about the cost. We will, in the future we will look and find other solutions. Maybe the same cost as before. Maybe not. But you know, at the end, is we can see after seven years now everyone is talking about sustainability. You know, our CEO started talking to us seven years ago, eight years ago. I mean, that's amazing. So now in the organization, in our company, everyone has this in, in, in their mind. So every step we make, every process we make, we try to do it more efficient, more sustainable, uh, and also looking the, the the footprint we are going to leave in the community. Um, again, this is why we have such a nice partnership here with, with TCC uh, in Thailand. They have the same values. Uh, we can see, you know, all the time. Um, Melia, at the end, you know, I, I was, I was quite, quite surprised. The other day they called me and they told me, look, Ernesto, the Ministry of, of Health is, is going to give you an award to your hotel. Uh, you're going to have a Green Health Hotel Award. What I'm really proud to, to share here. We are going to pick it up on the 23rd of, of this month. So it's about working on these four pillars, not, not on only on one of them, but all of them uh, together. So um, Melia, it, it's working in, in different... If, if you can put my, my last slide, sorry. I can, I can show you some examples of, of what we are doing um, in, in Samui. Uh, well, in Samui, what we are doing is we are working with, uh, with, with the temples nearby, um, our hotel. We are working with the schools also. We are helping them to improve the playing areas for children. We have, um, even myself and, and, and the, the kids of, of, you know, of the employees 
can can access to this activity. So uh, we encourage the guest to to give us uh, to 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 give us some money to 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 spend afterward in material, and we put the work. So all the all the employees go and and work in the in the temple in the schools. We encourage also diversity in our hotels. Uh, we had last week our diversity week all around our 380 hotels. Um, I was uh, also nicely surprised that Mr. Escarrer uh, showed our picture from Thailand. So this was quite, quite nice to see, uh, shared with our 40,000 uh, colleagues around the world. Um, you know, and at the end, not, not only because it was, it was our hotel here, but it was Thailand. So he was showing Thailand again. You know, we're in the picture all the time. The, what, is, what is quite good. Um, and as, as I was saying, we have also a picture over there. Uh, recently, we have our fire drill, uh, participating all the, all the employees and also all, all our guests that wanted to participate. And at the end, what we, what we want to, to try, Melia, um, in partnership with, with uh, TCCs, is to make a footprint in the community, to make, to make smiles, you know, on, on these children. It was not much, but, you know, you could see them happy, you know, with these, these slight changes. We bought some furniture for, for the playing area. We, we painted all the area. We went there with, um, with some ice cream that they liked a lot. So, yeah, I mean, it's some, some nice uh, activities we, we make with, with the local community. Uh, ben, uh, apart from the social uh, side of the, uh, of the four pillars, uh, sustainability is also uh, buying local, it's waste management, it's renewable energies. So, I mean, you are part of PATA. Uh, Thai Association, Centara, all of things. So what are the works of all those? Uh? PATA, Pacific Asia Travel Association, 71 years old. And their mission is to promote travel and tourism in a sustainable way. PATA is the one that went uh, to Chiang Mai and put Chiang Mai of Thailand in the tourism map. But mainly they said the mission is sustainability tourism. See, it has been talking ways, right? But when are we really adopted it? I think in the very recent years. Sustainability is three things, right? People, product, and profit. We take care of our people. And then once your, your people understand, people take care of product, the profits will come. So that's basically, I come from Centara Hotels and Resorts, and that's what we, we do. So back into an organization, Centala engage our people, make it a family organization. So you spend more time at work than at home, unfortunately, but we make it a second home. So once you engage, you make sure that you, uh, people inside organization have uh, reskill, train them, and also connect them with the community nearby so that's another sustainability. So many activities have been done, right? And, and, and uh, many products within op operation team really, you know, on top of their head, how can they save energy? How can they save water? How can they reduce the laundry? So it is a best practice. And I think this is not just before COVID time, but it's quite sometimes, you know, and especially with the Thai stock market. If you are part of a stock exchange uh, company, you have a mandate to be a good governance, and you have to tell other people how you do it too. So Centara, it's in a centel in stock market, so we share a lot of best practice. Be a trainer, a good train, you know, train other people too. So I think if we keep doing this, um, it, it, it will go. And I think right now, uh, Thai society, I mean, our community, our tourism community in Thailand, we have a good partnership with, of course, TAT, we got DASTA, we got TSEP, and, and um, like Thai Hotel Association, part of Thailand chapter, ATTA. Uh, we have webinar how to share, and we even have the on-ground training, on-ground. So we, have to just, we just have to keep doing it, I would say. Yep. Okay, so we're going to wrap up. Uh, so we don't, uh, we don't eat time into, uh, into lunch. Yes, you know, having seen that, you know, yeah, 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 I'm going to. 
give you the word right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. I just want to wrap up a little bit what we have been saying here, you know, like uh, sustainable tourism is not uh, a tourism product, but it's a way of management uh, tourism. Uh, we have talked about uh, accessibility, about connectivity, and, you know, the way to work uh, public-private uh, sector, you know, is the way to go in Spain, also public-public. And, you know, working together, and we, you, maybe in the questions we also, or maybe later on during lunch, we can talk about how uh, IFEMA Madrid can work with the trade tourism here, uh, partners in... Yes, please, go ahead. <coughs> Good afternoon, Swadekhap. My name is Amtiaz Makhul. I'm the executive editor of Travel Impact Newswire based in Bangkok. Uh, first thing, I'd just like to support Kun Ben's call for a review of the visa procedures. Uh, I think Europe is really losing market share big time to Japan. Uh, and having uh, experienced the, I think sometimes the very, I will be very frank, the very insulting and offensive procedure that goes in. I mean, why do you have to know our bank accounts in order to get there? Uh, you know, it's completely unnecessary and it looks like an intrusion into our privacy. And you're losing market share to Japan big time to this. And I don't see any reason why Japan should take that move and uh, Europeans should still have those archaic old ways of uh, requiring visa facilities. So bravo to you, Kun Ben. I, I do hope to work with you in taking that agenda forward. Uh, my question is really to all the members of the panel. Uh, you mentioned, uh, Madam Moderator, you mentioned uh, 40 million tourists that Thailand received and 80 million that Spain received. Uh, both countries have become victims of over-tourism. Over-tourism. Uh, in your country, Barcelona is now trying to restrict cruise ships. Uh, in our part of the world, we're also trying to come to terms with numbers. What is the sharing of experiences that we can do in order to promote sustainability? This is clearly a problem. And as Kun Virasak mentioned, never mind what we did in the past, we have to get it right in the future. A, a wonderful statement. And over-tourism and looking at the experiences of that is something that we can clearly address. So perhaps I'd really like to hear from the panel as to what we can do to address this really growing problem in this new era post-COVID cup. Thank you. Thank you. And now we have. Over-tourism has happened in very few places. And you know there is a paradox. You mentioned Barcelona, but maybe you go, I don't know, two kilometers away from that spot and there's nobody. The challenge is how do you manage the flows? And it's a question of strategy and how you approach that. There are several places like Amsterdam that have done it that way and they have sent uh, the, the tourists to visit also places around Amsterdam where there, are no, there were no opportunities for the locals because there were no tourists going there. And it has, it's been uh, quite successful. So I think it's a question of planning and not letting everything happen by itself. So then again, this requires focus and a strategy. And if that's done properly, then I don't think we will have any problems of, of that nature. What about in, in Bangkok, for example? Well, tourism has been the issue of Thailand for some time, and I agree with Yolanda that that's why we, we try to introduce people to a place where it's less visited, shine the lights to the blind spot. And, but that blind spot has a lot to offer too. Uh, it doesn't have to be a nice, great view. It's maybe great people to see and a good culture to be uh, a part with or good food to try. But again, yes, what is the means to get them there? Because it's much more expensive to bring people to those places than staying in the uh, hot spot where too many people are already there. Uh, that's one part that we are trying to, to promote train traveling. Uh, uh, though it doesn't happen overnight, and our road system is too good to, to forget about. But that's also, it tells us that that's why the partnership between Thailand and Spain uh, in tourism will be quite crucial because we can learn and see what else. Because having a train and train station there is not enough. It will have to have many other things, good managers, good planners, and uh, the correct price, the right price, and uh, connectivities to bring people to places. Uh, 
uh, that will fit with their schedule. Uh, those are the things that we can imagine about, but we haven't had the experience ourselves. Therefore, it is the, this partnership uh, will be very crucial to the development of Thai tourism. Thank you. Okay. So just to, to finish up and just add on, on what the speaker has said and addressing your, your uh, question about or your comment about over tourism, just tell you that another thing that we use and we are using to uh, fight again over, because as Yolanda said, over tourism happens not just in a city, but in a, spe in a specific area of the city, uh, let's say in Barcelona, the Sagrada Familia, everybody wants to go and see the Sagrada Familia. We are working with um, a technology, you know, so uh, technology is allowing us to divert uh, people to another area. For example, uh, if you book, uh, if you want to go to the Picasso Museum, you book your time, you don't spend time online. You can see and go to other cities, other areas of the, of the cities. When you are going to book, it tells you where are the peaks. So working with that with technology and also trying to move new products into the market and you know, letting people see the other, other attractions, it allows you to manage the flows of people. So it's a um, very slow work, but it's a work that is working. So you know, hopefully, among all of us, you know, we will make it much better for the future. So we can keep talking. I mean, if any, I don't know if any, yes, you have another question. Um, <clears throat> I don't know why Spain cannot get more tourists from Thailand. Maybe, maybe if you look at the Thai map, if you come to Thailand, you come to Bangkok, you don't go to Phuket. Or maybe you go to Thailand, you go to Chiang Mai. Because when people go to Europe, they go to Italy, Swiss, France, Spain is, is down there. Um, and, and I think no direct, in, no direct flight is also a handicap. I think we have to start that. I'm a big fan of Spain. In 1978, my second son was born in Marbella. My mother-in-law lived in San Pedro. It's a heaven. The seafood, the country, you know. And, uh, and recently, when Ambassador Ratikud was ambassador in Madrid, I visited her and uh, I had a chance to look at Madrid. It's, it's, I don't understand why, you know, the Thai do not go more, 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 more to, uh, to Spain. Maybe the answer is in uh, Unamas, El Tapio, Paleta. Maybe you need more Spanish restaurants. Maybe you need more the Rioja wine, more, more, you know, and direct flight, direct flight. I think, I think the more publicity that you are doing, um, that Spain is a wonderful country. Well, let, let, let me tell you just to... And, I, and before, I, before I forgot, um, COVID, please tell the Thai, they are now obsessed about COVID again. I don't know why. In Europe, Nobody talk about COVID anymore. Tell the Thai to forget about COVID and go outside the world and, and travel. You know. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, just let me tell you that to live in a high note, that the number of uh, Thai people to Spain this year is really uh, skyrocketing. And we have a growth of over 200 over the numbers of 2019. So, you know, I think from uh, January to April, is uh, already like 17,000, you know, compared to like 5,000 in 2019. So huge numbers. If we can get that direct flight, you know, that would be epic. So, you know, uh, thank you so much. Thank you uh, for, you know, sharing your thoughts. Um, we can keep talking, you know, over, over lunch. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, may I kindly ask the panelists and uh, moderator for a group photo, please? And ladies and gentlemen, the morning program has now ended. We will pause for a luncheon break. We kindly ask you to reassemble for the afternoon session at 2.30 on promotion of the Spanish language and culture in Thailand and of the Thai language and culture in Spain. Thank you. The luncheon is at the Vite Samosan, room three. So out of this room on your left, thank you very much. Yeah, yeah.